we all know that power supply is important in our everyday life but what about if the main supply or main source fail what is the other different options we are having so i would like to introduce uh, mr manish agarwal sir he is the owner of prime power systems in mumbai and he is uh, into the generators and into the varieties of uh, different fields uh, he will definitely introducing uh, himself with a better uh, you know details so that i would like to invite uh, manish sir sir are you there can you able to hear my voice yes yes uh, good morning uh... Good morning, everybody. Perfect, perfect, sir. Sir, uh, we are very excited to have you with uh, our students, so that our students will also get an insight from the industry. We all are learning uh, so many things in the college, and how exactly those things are going to uh, helpful in the industry that uh, we are going to discuss today. So, give me a moment, uh, so that uh, sir, you can start with your introduction, please. So good morning, everybody. And uh, I am Manish Agarwal. I am from Prime Power Systems, and uh, we are uh, into selling of gensets and uh, of fifteen kVA to two thousand five hundred kVA. I hope I am audible. Uh, otherwise, please uh, message me in case uh, I am not audible. Yeah. So perfectly fine, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, I am uh, into this field where we sell fifteen uh, kVA to two thousand five hundred kVA generators, and I have been uh, selling this almost from last three decades. And uh, before we start on this, I would be really uh, feeling myself very much uh, um, lucky to conduct this on a Guru Purnima day. i wish all the students and especially the professors here uh, rohan sir and uh, barnali madam a very happy guru purnima uh, uh, there is no life without guru there is no Thank life you so much, uh, sorry to uh, have left for a minute there was a urgent call and uh, i uh, appreciate your time for coming to and giving the lecture to our students they will immensely benefit from it i'm sure i also uh, i would uh, love to invite you to the campus and the institute uh, once everything is normalized and uh, it will be nice to meet you again sir yeah thank you please carry on with the lecture sir okay. sorry for interruption no it's okay ma'am thank you all the best to you so i was telling there is nothing possible without guru all the big people who have made a mark in the any field made be politics made be industry made be sports they all had guru and as the saying goes guru bina gyan nahi and it is the same everywhere so let us first respect and bow down and remember our gurus uh, and thank them always wherever we are in life from today maybe to their to your journey because you all are so young you all are so uh, energetic the young generation team uh, which we are very very um, hi uh, we are looking towards you with very high hopes fine we'll start with the um the um, slides so can we have the first next so as the saying goes there is no life without sun similarly in modern age there is no life without power power is basically the main source of modern life and engineering there were there must be number of engineering uh, going on uh, maybe electrical electronics mechanical uh, and so on you know the uh, the line goes but there is no engineering without power power is not only the core sector um, but the but the basic um, source from which any kind of engineering or life in modern age starts it's like the soul it's like the soul to the body power is sold to us in today's world india is the third largest country to produce and consume power of course first is china and second is us so china china us and india is the third largest country to produce yeah the next next india generates approximately 13 lakhs 85000 megawatts per year as against china which generates 75 lakhs and us about 43 lakhs megawatt per year maximum 
power in India is generated by the coal-based power plants. The coal-based power plants are basically taking care of almost uh, 60 to 65 percent of the uh, are, are generating about 60 to 65 percent of the power. The balance 35 percent is by renewable energies like uh, thermal or um, uh, hydro, uh, new, uh, new, uh, oil-based or nuclear-based, diesel-based, natural gas-based. So the chunk is coal, coal-based power plants we have, which generates 70% uh, of 13,85,000. That's about, say, eight, 9 lakhs or 8.5 to 9 lakhs. Now, how the power consumption has increased in the last 75 years of approximately, or 75 years approximately of our um, independence. So in 1947, when we were um, we got freedom and we got uh, independence, uh, the population of India was 3.3 crores, and the power produced was only 1,362 megawatts, whereas an average per capita usage yearly was only 16 units approximately. In 2002, vis-a-vis, -vis, this so it's around the time when you people were born. The kids were born. Uh, the population was approximately 108 crores and the power produced was about 85,000 megawatts. Now imagine 1362 to 18, 85,000, such a big uh, growth we have taken. And the usage went up almost from 16 to 465 units per capita yearly. That's about 30 times. And in 2021, that is presently, the population approximately is 135 crores and the power produced is 13,83,000 megawatt. And the usage has increased another three folds time. That is about 1,200 units per capita yearly. This shows how important power is to us in our daily life. Yeah, the next, next, next. Yeah. Now, grid is the main source of power. What is grid? Grid means the uh, supply boards, the like MSCB or BSES or uh, Reliance Power, Adani Power. These are the grids. So the grid is the main source of power, which is sometimes not continuous, which is sometimes not sufficient. So we have we have surplus power generation capacity. We have surplus power generation capacity, but where we lag is the transmission and distribution, distribution infrastructure, basically. So which is still underway because we are a fast uh, growing country. And uh, this uh, this lack or this uh, losses in transmissions are being uh, being fixed by these, this um, advanced level of transmission and distribution network. Yes. Next. The other. Yeah. Next. The other dependable uh, sources are. For apart from the grid, we suppose if the grid is not sufficient enough to give us the required power, the other powers on which standby powers on which we can depend is most commonly used as UPS. UPS is uninterrupted power source. So that is battery operated with a battery backup system. You must be knowing. Uh, and it, the only thing is that it cannot be used for long hours, probably five to six hours is the maximum what you can, it can be used. At the same time, it cannot take care of the torque load when a machine and the AC or bigger motors or machine starts. The UPS cannot take care of that kind of torque load. Torque load is, you know. Uh, then we have windmills. Now windmills is another source of power, but then the problem is that windmills uh, cannot be used in uh, popularly in houses or factories or malls uh, or towers because it requires huge space, uh, open land, uh, which is definitely not not possible in metros and now in B and C grids city also. So the third is diesel generators. Now diesel generators is something which is diesel based and gas based. Of course, we have smaller generators which come on petrol start, kerosene run or probably petrol start and petrol run but diesel generators in industry is the most popular used generator because it can run for long hours at the same time it can also have a long life then the torque uh, space investment is not as high as in windmills or 
probably uh, the other technicalities which UPS is many a times not able to take care. Yeah, the next. So next. So DG sets are basically uh, gas based and diesel based. The generators are basically gas based and diesel based. Of course, I said it's a petrol and kerosene. Uh, it used to come now. It's almost like no, I don't think kerosene are coming. But then petrol generators, the Shiram Honda or um, Birla Yamaha, they are coming and they cater to the uh, residence and small shop requirements. That's about 0.5 kVA to 3 kVA. That is the entire uh, range of petrol start, petrol run, diesel generating set. But uh, we have HSD, which is very, HSD is high speed diesel. Uh, high speed diesel, diesel generators are the most commonly used machines or power source or standby supply in industry. 5 kVA to 2000 kVA is the range where we have this generators popularly running and it is uh, so easy to use, so easy to handle, so easy to maintain uh, that uh, this has actually taken over all the other um, plants, all the other uh, generators, which were initially with the LDO also, that is light diesel oil. Initially, there were generators coming, uh, imported generators coming, which were having the upper hand somewhere in the late 90s or around 2000. We were having LDO generators also, but that was uh, consuming huge amount of space and at the same time were not easy for maintenance. Whereas these diesel generators, 5 kVA to 2,500 kVA and multiples, if, if multiples means if a, a factory or an industry has a requirement of suppose 4,000 kVA, so they can go, go for 2 of 2,000 kVA. If a factory has a requirement of 6,000 kVA, they can always go for 1,500 kVA into four numbers that is multiples or parallel operation so we can go for parallel operation now what is parallel operation so parallel operation is when you have a total requirement of let's say uh, 3000 kva for an industry and in 3000 kva you have 1500 kva one generator and 1500 kva second generator now what happens in case the first generator is totally loaded and is complete with 1500 kVA, then this parallel operation uh, circuit or parallel operation arrangement will give command to the second generator to start and the second generator will come in the picture. And these two generator will share the load between between them. Suppose the grid, the bus bar load is approximately, the load is approximately say 2500 kVA. So 1500 is taken care by one. The second will come and there will be a load sharing in equal proportion. It will not be 1500 and the next 800 or 900 is going to be this. No, it's going to be 2400 is the grid load, uh, bus bar load. And that load is going to be distributed amongst these two generators equally. So that is known as proper load sharing in parallel operation. And it can go up to maybe any amount, maybe 6,000 kVA, 6 numbers, whatever is the requirement of the factory. It gradually goes accordingly. Next, for the uh, huge uh, factories, they have gas, gas-based gas generators. Now, gas-based generators is, uh, is a very costly generator. And uh, previous one, this is a very costly generator and the cost of gas based generator is as high as almost three crores approximately per megawatt now the usage of gas based industry uh, generators are in uh, industries where you do not want the power to get uh, to go or probably they do not have um, any kind of other power so they can use power continuously round the clock and the usage cost, the running cost is very, very low. This is the whole usage of gas generator, basically used in glass plants or refineries. Okay, now the, the next is popular in industry is this range. So when we speak about industry, when we speak about industry, the most popular ratings are 30 kVA. Below 30 kVA is all for the shops or residence purpose or maybe for bungalows. But 
uh, hardly we have uh, below 30 kva going in industries as on today uh, we have 30 kva to 125 kva dg says in small to medium industries small to medium industries where they have maybe supporting industry if suppose you are having uh, uh, somebody is preparing uh, bottles for coke or somebody is preparing only cap for the coke so they are kind of supporting industries then 160 to 380 is another medium to semi large industries so medium to semi large textiles then we have uh, cosmetic industry chemical industry pharmaceutical industries and so on so they use these kinds of generators 160 kva to 380 kva and 500 kva to 750 kva goes basically for the large scale industries now large scale industries are the industries which are catering to the major sectors of um, of india or for any supply chain or um, having the requirement where they cannot cut over the, the power so they go for a 500 or a 750 and thousand and upwards is definitely for the masses uh, the production where they have masses production and for the heavy industries yes the next so now th these are all generators yeah uh yeah next things so now coming on to the installation of the genset the installation of the genset is very uh simple uh nowadays all the generators which come uh now come with um, duly properly installed duly properly um duly properly uh, uh, ready to use arrangement but the outer connections like power cabling control cabling uh has to be done there has to be it has to be connected as per the required size uh with power and control cabling we have exhaust piping we have fuel piping uh exo earthing is basically required for each generators may it be a 10 kva generator or a thousand kva we require four or things for the generator two for neutral and two for body so what happens when we have uh, two neutral and two body is for a safer side if one neutral earthing is not working at least there will be no calamity and the second earthing is going to work strips are basically the strips which connect the earthing pit from the pit to the generator where it is installed so that is basically the earthing strips exhaust piping is for uh, um, letting the smoke which comes out of the engine uh, to the at atmosphere in the fuel piping that is the connection between the fuel tank of the generator to the engine and finally and uh, then the battery charging is required battery are basically sent in uncharged condition so it has to be charged uh, of course the diesel has to be filled and then finally the commissioning of the dg set takes place and from there the warranty starts yes next so this i can just show you this picture which is very clearly showing the exhaust piping going up the, these are the two uh, the two pipes which are going up is are basically the exhaust pipes now these exhaust pipes come out of the engine cylinders and the smoke the exhaust the flue gases what we call the which has the emission levels so uh, the this is taken over and left in the uh, atmosphere but in case the generator is above 1000 kva then this chimney has to be taken almost 30 meters uh, height and left in the atmosphere there because this is the rule of cpc that is central pollution control board uh, yeah this is the uh, these are the engines the alternator we can see and uh, the cables on the right side right hand side picture i'm talking about the cables which are coming out those are the connecting cables uh basically engine uh, which uh, um, moves is a prime mover connected on a common base frame is uh, we can see the black color base frame there that base frame on which the engine and alternator both are assembled so, so both the uh, engine and alternator are assembled at the same time we are having uh, the power uh, the power condition this is the cables yes coming out 
and uh, this cables are basically connected to the load that is the factory or the industry where it will get power power from so this is the engine this is the battery what we have this battery is only used for starting of the generator that is all it's similar like a car and of course when the generator is in rest condition this battery ensures that everything is okay we have a battery charger also next to the battery so that it yeah it ensures ki we do not have the the day the generator is required the batteries are not um, down this is basically the uh, exhaust uh, manifold from where we have the uh, exhaust flue gases coming and then going from here to the uh, via this uh, exhaust pipe to the atmosphere of course we have a silencer there which can be seen on the right side of the uh, picture this silencer is basically for just to ensure the pressure with which the engine uh, um, ex uh, the exhaust gases come out the silencer controls that so the silencer is slightly wide in color uh, wide in um, in dimension and from there it goes up to the sky so this is 30 meters high this generator is 1250 kva which we have exported to um, um kenya and this generator is uh, will be when installed it will have a uh, 30 meters high to take the flue gases up and leave it there yeah we go to the next slide now the dg sets as we have seen there which consists of engine alternator fuel tank battery silencer control panel and acoustic enclosure now what is engine engines are of two types one is <coughs> radiator cooled engine and one is heat exchanger type now radiator cooled engines are the engines where uh, engine are uh, fitted with radiators now when we have radiators there the cooling medium is coolant the radiator is filled with coolant now and suppose in certain industries where they say ki well, we have fluffs or cotton or uh, um, you know uh, that threads moving and choking the fins of the radiator then we have heat exchanger type now heat exchanger type or maybe in the basement where you cannot have a draft of the radiator uh, air coming out of the radiator it does not have any uh, passage to go out so there they go for a heat exchanger especially if you are installing a generator in the basement then you do it with a heat exchanger type then the alternator is 415 volts that is the india uh, line voltage 415 volts for generator the uh, the grid has 440 volts but generator runs on 415 volts the line voltage is 415 volts of course the frequency is 50 hertz this alternator has a regulator that is avr automatic voltage regulator which has a um, a, a, speed, a regulation of 2 to 2 and a half percent probably up to 5 percent it can regulate so in case of any jerk load or torque load going this voltage which shoots up or comes down there is a, 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 a voltage regulator which ensures the line voltage which is 450 volts it comes again to 415 volts now this engine and alternator both are um, assembled on a common base frame and uh, there is a fuel tank which gives a uh, fuel tank which gives fuel um, you know, diesel to the engine the, the battery and the leads which we just saw the silencer which we saw in the previous picture and of course the control panel so the control panel uh the control panel controls and monitors the generators and its parameters now the voltage level the frequency level the ampere level the kilowatt or probably the um, power factor so these kinds of um, parameters are monitored in with the help of this control panel basically ammeter voltmeter frequency meter kwh meter and kw that is kilowatt these are the five parameters and for the larger generator the sixth is power factor then coming on the next and the last which is more important most important is acoustic generator yes this is the acoustic this is the this is a kirloskar generator and this is an acoustic uh, on inside with with which the generator is housed this acoustic enclosed there is no um, abnormal noise level 
in the surrounding. So this is CPCB approved, that is Central Pollution Control Board. Now this CPCB approved means the generator when it will run, it will not make a noise of more than 75 decibels. 75 decibels at a dis at one meter distance under free field condition means in case the generator is running and the noise level has to be tested and it has to be 75 or below then the condition is it should be free field free field is there is no external noise so under free field condition this noise is 75 decibels which is um, approved by the man engine manufacturer and riveted there so the no approval has to be taken yeah the next this is the generator yeah this is the what we were talking uh, the base frame we can see now the panels the panels are of three types uh, was first of course the standard manual panel it is similar to a generator st starting the, when we start the generator we have a standard manual panel to control and um, monitor the generator but in case somebody wants now industries hotels or malls they go for an automatic mains failure panel that is an amf panel so an automatic mains failure panel is such that when the power is there the load is running on power but as the power fails the generator will automatically start and take over the load and at the same time the generator will start running and the load will be uh, the load the load will be intact but at the same time when the power returns then this this generator will be given a command by this amf panel to again go offline that is switch off and gradually the load is going to be changed over from generator to mains supply again so that is known as auto changeover system or auto mains failure panel that is an amf panel as the normal term in industry is known as synchronizing panel is basically a panel when you have two generators running and these two generators has to be have to be when they have to run in parallel operation together they have to be synchronized so it is similar to the concept when you have to uh, when a person has to jump from one uh, vehicle into another vehicle the speed of both the vehicle has to be same so similarly for synchronizing panel we have to treat so see three parameters basically one is the voltage uh, one is the frequency and the voltage frequency and the power factor of both the generator has to be matched and that leads to a parallel operation panel that is once this synchronized is done then the parallel operation takes place yeah next this is a generator uh, uh, a small generator with acoustic enclosure and uh, uh, we can see an acoustic enclosure here. This is a ready to use arrangement. We have um, everything done here. Only cabling has to be done and the exhaust piping has to be done. That is all. Otherwise, this generator is ready, ready to start generator. Yes, next. Yeah, this is the panel. This is basically a distribution board panel in the industry. That is uh, when the generator power comes, those cables which were coming out of the generator are then um, um, then connected here in this panel and from this panel the distribution goes to different different sections or different different loads whatever may it be an ac load or a motor load or if it's a mall then level one uh, level two or whatever you know so these kinds of the uh, this is the panel the left and right you can see one is the bus bar chamber and one is the cable alley means in one you have bus bar and incoming and one is the outgoing that is the cable alley yeah next the life of the genset now um, the life of the genset is uh is about in years if we talk it's about 10 to 15 years because we assume running it at about 1500 1500 hours to 1800 hours in a um year makes it about 20,000 working hours. Now, the warranty of the generator is two years, first of all. So for the two years, anything happens, the company will give you service free of charge. But the top overalling of the generator, the top overalling means um, the generator has to be overall with the with the top overall means only the um, va uh, valves or the um, I mean uh, the valves or probably injectors they are 
taken care of from the engine side i'm talking so after 10 to 12000 engine uh, um, working hours operation the engine is opened only on the head the head of the engine is open and the injectors or the certain valves need polishing or replacement or probably repair whatever can be done they do and this is required after 10 to 12000 but 18 to 20000 it's a major overall where the engine is totally stripped down that means the crankshaft the pistons the con rods is all opened and checked whether they are reusable or probably because the engine which rotates at 1500 rpm uh, rotates with these three or four major things that is con rod camshaft or connecting rods these are basically the pistons cylinders these are the uh, uh, the uh, in, these are the things where which is the uh, life of that engine so that is checked after 18 to 20,000 hours as recommended by the company, the manufacturer. That is, um, of course, we have a number of many engine manufacturers like Kirloskar, Caterpillar, Perkins, uh, the Perkins, Ashok Leyland is one. But the most popular uh, in today's market is Cummins, that is Cummins India and the Kirloskar um, oil engines and, of course, Caterpillar. These are the three major um, uh, players of generators in India. This, these generators are periodically maintained. That is, every after every 500 hours of operation, the filters of the generator, that is the oil filter and the fuel filter, the oil filter and the fuel filter that requires to be that requires to be changed, and the oil has to be changed. Uh, the oil is there in the sump, which is used for the lubrication of the engine or to keep the engine cooler. So that oil has to be changed after every 500 hours of operation. So these are the only two things which is required to be changed. One is uh, the filters and the oil. Yeah, next. These are the panels, which uh, the same panels, distribution panel, uh, the, where the power from the generator comes, the power cables from the generator comes and are um, terminated here in this panel. And from here, the, uh, uh, the cables are taken or the load or the power is taken to the uh, load within the factory or within the unit. Yes. So when we uh, install a generator, uh, we have to have some approvals. Initially, there were many, but now uh, things are very simple. Uh, we have only two kinds of approvals. And the two kinds of approvals are, one is from the electrical approval, electrical inspector. Now, what does the electrical inspector take care Elect As I explained to you, uh, in case of automatic panel or in case of manual panel, these are the only two types of generator. One is automatic and one is manual. Now, suppose uh, in, in case of automatic, where we have an auto changeover system or a auto AMF panel, that is auto mains failure panel. Now, the load is running on mains load, on, on mains power and the mains power fails and the AMF panel gives command to the generator to start and generator takes over the load. Now the load is running on generator and suddenly the mains power again comes in. Now to ensure that these two power do not collide, they do not mix and create a dhoom dharaka, for that there has to be an isolation given. Okay, an isolator or the locking between the two um, outgoings have to, uh, to be given. Now that is checked by the electrical inspector that when the two powers, one is the generator is running and the power comes in, there is proper isolation between two powers so they do not mix and create any untoward happening. So that is the electrical inspector which takes care. Of course, uh, electrical inspector also takes care of the earthing is properly done because the generator, each generator require four or things I told you, two were uh, for neutral uh, and the two, two were for body. So these four are things and a proper isolation between the mains and the DG set is done. In case if it is not a, uh, a automatic panel, then a manual changeover switch is installed there. So they they will see either an automatic changeover or a manual changeover is installed and the earthings are done 
properly. So this is the electrical inspector, which will, uh, which is the, the, that's the job of an electrical inspector. The CPCB, that is Central Pollution Control Board, uh, it detects the noise level, which is uh, labeled by labeled by the man engine manufacturer like Kirloskar or Caterpillar or um, Ashok Leyland or Cummins. So they label it. Yes, our engine is uh, meeting the emission norms. First of all, that is a NOx level. Uh, emission norms and also the noise level because the actual noise is produced by the engine. The engine has the pistons which keep on you know running up and down and and the tappet. So the pistons, the cylinder rods, and this within the cylinder of the engine. So they they make the noise. So this noise is ensured to be within the limits by the engine manufacturer and CPCB certificate is riveted there on the engine. So there is no requirement of CPCB to be done by the customer. Customer only has to take the electrical inspector approval. Yeah, next. So this is a generator. Um, we can see with the, um, uh, the uh, Kirloskar generator uh, with soundproof acoustic. And uh, uh, we can see the louvers there. This is basically for the radiator air inside to be uh, pushed outside and the uh, radiator comes out, the, the air comes out from here and basically um, uh, the, it, it gets dissipated in the atmosphere. Now, uh, when, uh, while installing a generator, the basic things we see is uh, it should have 1.5 meters each side um, uh, space for movement and for operation similar like your car when we sit in the car and we want we have to come out there has to be space for opening the door so uh, we have to uh, have space to open the doors of the generator one and at the same time uh, uh, we will have uh, um, space to operate the generator and tomorrow of course in case of maintenance something has to be taken out removed or done something then we have to have that kind of space so minimum 1.5 meters um, on each side that is all the four sides it is recommended by the engine manufacturer and if two gen sets that's the parallel operation or the synchronizing if two generators are placed side by side together then we recommend about two and a half meters because the heat dissipation the thermal heat and the heat dissipation of the generator is such that it should not be uh, overlapping the other generators so that you know the ambient temperature the generator is basically driven by the ambient temperature also if the ambient temperature is high then probably the efficiency of generator is going to be low it is similar to um, uh, you know um, um, a human being if we work in a, in a temperature of say 38 and 40 our efficiency is going to be low Whereas if we uh, sit and work in an air-conditioned office where the temperature is maintained at 21, 22 or still lesser 22, 22, the efficiency is going to go high. So this is how the proper spacing of the generator will ensure a better efficiency of the genset. Yeah, next. Now this is uh, the soundproof generator. Again, with the louvers of the exhaust, uh, the uh, radiator, which we can see here, and a silencer on the top. We are seeing the flange there in front of the black silencer. We are seeing a flange there, the silver color. That's a flange. And from there, it is basically connected and taken um, outside the room or maybe a spout kind of a thing where it is taken for half a meter or one meter uh, so that, you know, uh, it is dissipated in the air. But these do not require any kind of special um, exhaust chimneys because these generators are all below 1000. The Supreme Court has said any generator which is above 1000 kVA will have to have 30 meters of chimney height. That is the exhaust coming out of the generator has to be left high up in the air 30 meters above the ground level. Yeah, next. Yeah, next. Now, coming on to the running cost of the generators. Of course, with the diesel and uh, petrol prices going sky high, the cost of diesel generators is also um, quite going high. Now, a generator generates about a normal generator between 30 kVA to say um, 250 kVA in the medium size of industry generates about 3.6 units to 3.75 units per liter 
of diesel and of course certain a small amount of oil is also required there now the diesel is basically uh, the the cost of the diesel and or the generation of the diesel uh, 3.6 to 3.75 units also depends upon the quality of filters in the generator if the filters are not cleaned then the flow of diesel is not going to be uniform so the oil of uh, diesel galleries the uh, diesel line is not going to supply the right amount of um, diesel in the cylinder ch- cylinder where this combustion takes place now uh, with the uh, combustion not taking place properly you will say or a customer can say okay, we are running the generator but then it is not giving us more than 3.2 or 3.1 uh, few uh, units because this is because the right amount of diesel uh, uh, the the right amount of diesel is spread but the filters are not clean so filter that is maintenance timely of changing of filters are very much important similar as in our water filters we have to change the filter candle very regularly otherwise we may have we may not get the clean quality of water what it is designed for so the running cost with this with 3.6 units to 3.75 units comes to as good as high as 25 euro rupees uh, per unit that's the running cost yeah next now uh, these are the generators where we can see the acoustic enclosures which are uh, the doors which are treated with acoustics the black color there are the acoustics uh, on the doors of the generators and uh, these acoustics uh, are basically 50 mm to 75 mm in thickness the wall size or the door size uh, thickness of this door is 50 mm to 75 mm and of course for the big generators that is uh 300 250 kv and upwards right up to 750 it is about 4 inches that is 100 mm so these this is the um, acoustics uh, thickness which ensures the noise level is not going above 75 decibels and these are all designed by the uh, engine manufacturers and uh, they uh, basically command dictate or uh, inform that this is the kind of thickness it is required for the noise yeah next this is the control panel of the engine which monitors the uh, of the engine the 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 control panel which we just discussed uh, some time back that was the dg set that is diesel generators control panel the diesel generator control panels is basically a panel which takes care of the uh, um, amperage out with the generators running the load at which the generator is running what is the line voltage of the generator or the power factor of the generator how is the power factor controlled the generator is having a power factor of 0.8 it is designed for a 0.8 power to run on 0.8 power factor but in case if you have the load which are uh, linear which are non linear load or maybe drives or thyristor load you know or heating load because heating load we know the uh, power factor is unity so suddenly that generator which is running on 0.8 and you are giving a unity power factor the load comes down the generator is derated there to almost 25% so 100 kv generator should be taking 100 kv it will only take 80 kv at unity power factor because 100 kv 0.8 so if you multiply 100 with 0.8 is uh, 80 kv 80 kv now if you have uh, unity power factor that means at 80 kv only he, the generator will be 100% loaded so the, this engine panel base that is the control panel now this engine panel is basically a panel which is uh, installed for knowing the parameters specially of the engine not of the generator it is only of the engine that is the oil level of the engine the fuel level of the engine the speed of the engine or uh, the water temperature which is there in the engine or basically the coolant temperature or the oil temperature now the oil temperature has to be within a certain limit now how why will the oil temperature rise so the oil temperature will only rise because the level of oil is less so the lubrication is not good, having a proper lubrication or the small amount of oil is going to have the entire lubrication being done so that's going to be getting heated up one or the second is that oil is losing its viscosity that is the shine so if the oil loses its viscosity then definitely it is going to get 
um, uh, heated up very fast. So this oil level, oil temperature, fuel level, fuel temperature, or what uh, coolant temperature, uh, or the loading of the engine, on what RPM this engine is running, this is all monitored by this panel, which is known as the engine panel. Yeah, next. Now, we do not have the power shortage, uh, power uh, um, uh, cuts here in major part of the city, but still DG sets are mandatory. Why? Because any tower, any mall, any building, whether it is a commercial or a residential, any building having uh, a firefighting set or a lift, then they are um, they are want they are it is mandatory for them to have a diesel generator to install a diesel generator for getting the permissions. So generator is mandatory because tomorrow when a fire pump, there is a fire in the building or any incident. So they have to uh, use the firefighting uh, gadgets. And when do they use that firefighting instruments or the firefighting equipments for that, it is only generator which will take care of the power re required to run that firefighting equipments or the pumps or the sprinkler what you have in firefighting for um, uh, you know um, for 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 sprinkling water splashing water when you have fire now in case of lift building towers where you have lifts now in case somebody is going in the lift and the power fails so you have generators generator power comes in about 15 to 20 seconds of time so this lift will be back at least open and then you can uh, reuse but then in case the power is not there then the lift is going to be locked so any industry which is having continuous chain needs to have a genset means like cloth industry or steel industry or furnace industry or things where you have uh, the with power they have in the machine the supply chain industry in case the supply fails the material which is in their oven or which is inside the uh, machine gets wasted. They have to again clean the entire thing or probably if it is a thread the, for the cloth, then probably they have to ensure that it is a proper um, um, uh, weaving being done. Otherwise, in case if the power stops, the, the thread will break. And when the thread will break, you will have a joint there to be seen. So this uh, generator ensures that there is a proper continuous supply in case of failure of the main supply. Of course, today in any industry, any mall, any office building, um, we have generator sets, uh, which is there to back up in case of uh, any kind of power cut. So generator is basically man mandatory. Now this is uh, the DG control panel for an automatic system. Now for an automatic system, we have <coughs> two incoming supplies where we can see two uh, incoming supplies. The first is uh, on the top, we can see an MCCB. Now this MCCB is basically, uh, no, no. Uh, this MCCB is basically uh, the, the, uh, AV, the, uh, the uh, cable coming from the gen sets to the uh, control panel. And from this MCCB, it goes ahead. Now, it goes ahead and at the same time, we have two contactors which are below the MCCB, which are automatically functioning in for auto changeover, auto start, auto stop. These are the two contactors which are functioning there. Yeah, next. Here we can see a very clear silencer being mounted on the generator and the base frame there, then the acoustic enclosure and the silencer. Silencer is with aluminium cladding. This aluminium cladding is basically given so that you do not have any kind of um, um, the, the heat dissipation is taken care of with that aluminium cladding and the glass hole which is filled inside the, uh, the asbestos or the glass hole which is filled inside this aluminium cladding so that there is no more heat dissipated in the room by the by which the generator efficiency is good otherwise the heat which is dissipated from this exhaust silencer because the exhaust silencer is almost around um, 450 to 500 degrees centigrade this is the uh, uh, temperature of gases which are coming out of the generator so in case if 
a silencer is there and silencer is uh, inside the silencer you have gases passing with that 450 to 500 degree centigrade then probably the heat dissipation or the thermal heating which is going to be is going to affect the efficiency of the generator and that is the reason the aluminium cladding is done on the silencer yeah next the same yeah next so i think this we complete with the uh, with the generator and uh, yeah, we can show, yeah, we can see this picture just before that uh, picture. So, we are at the end of the presentation and it was very well explained uh, in detail uh, how the generators are basically having their construction, their working, their application, advantages, components in a very uh, well structured manner. Thank you, sir, for your uh, detailed explanation. And now it's time for a QA. So, we have our students with uh, some questions in their mind related with the uh, small things from your point of view, but for them, this is a new concept. So, let's start with the QA session. And uh, we have some students with us who can just unmute themselves and ask the question or give their feedback also. Go ahead, students. Yeah, uh, any questions? The generator industry is basically growing every year. In spite of the fact that uh, I would really like to add here, the generator industry is growing in, fight, in spite of the fact that we have uh, the power situation being improved by the, uh, uh, the government. But still, because of the growth and uh, nobody wants to keep their factory or their office or their uh, building without genset, this generator industry is growing by almost around 20% every year and the total generators which uh, total generator market in India presently is close to about uh, say this range about 30 to uh, 1500 kVA is around 20,000 to 25,000 generators per year. This is the generator uh, market. Yeah, ma'am, please go ahead and ask your question. Uh, first of all, thank you, sir, for such an informative uh, lecture and your invaluable guidance. Sir, I wanted to ask, what is the role of renewable energy or, uh, for example, solar power in standby power supply industry, in this generator industry? See, solar is altogether a different uh, source of energy, first of all. Okay, and generator is a different source of energy. Solar uh, is basically the energy which we all know is um, is manufactured by with the help of sun, and it is manufactured on site. That is maybe on the rooftop of a building or a factory or an office. Now, solar energy has some kind of constraint. First of all, for one kilowatt of solar to be generated, solar power to be generated, you generated, you require a space of almost around uh, ten square feet. You know, 10 square feet. So in case if you want, say, it's about 100 uh, or 10 kilowatt of power, which is very, very uh, uh, small power. So you require 100 square feet. And now imagine if you want uh, 100 square feet, you want 1000 uh, square feet for the 100 kilowatt. So in industry, if you want a 500 uh, uh, kilowatt power, you cannot keep on giving 5000 or maybe more just for installing that solar. So solar energy is altogether different. It is basically used for small applications, maybe in residentials or in commercials also, but only there where you do not have shortage of space. Yeah. Thank you, sir. To uh, add one point here, uh, like uh, we have uh, nowadays, uh, you know, uh, this pandemic is going on and we are, uh, the hospitals are basically having this uh, issue of uh, oxygen supply and that. So if uh, anything uh, related with the electricity goes down and such kind of uh, emergency supply which we talk about. So that we can say that it's not about the power, it's about the purpose of that power. Because for which we are using the standby power supply. And that purpose is what we are supposed to have a continuous power supply. And that is what I guess uh, we all are uh, looking at the DG set, not from the point of view of uh, Conventional energy source or non-conventional. Sir, I would just uh, you have raised a very nice point. I think uh, uh, I should just uh, give you a one one add here one point more. You are absolutely right. Now all the hospitals which are uh, uh, being uh, running uh, need to have a power 
supply backup, 100% power supply backup because yes, in case of any um, ICU patient or any operation theater going on or a ventilator going. But then at the same time, this generator will ensure that you have your power, your, your power needs are taken till the time your failure of power returns. That is till the time the mains are healthy again. But the generator requires around 30 seconds, 20 to 25 seconds to come online. Now for that 20 to 25 seconds, that particular ventilator or that particular ICU unit is having UPS. So that uninterrupted power supply you have, but then in a small, maybe 5 kVA or 10 kVA, that's all. But otherwise, once the generator is taken and has taken over, then the UPS will go offline and the generator will continue. Yes, sir. Perfect. So we have some students here. So just kindly raise your hand and unmute yourself and ask the question. Sir, uh, can I ask one more question? Yes, sir, please. Parmik, Rajapati. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, how is the landscape and uh, scenario of uh, standby power supplies changing by energy storage systems like uh, new Tesla power wall and battery battery systems like how it's changing the scenario of standby power supply industry. Uh, see, Marmik, uh, uh, these things are basically coming in first of all, but uh, solar also came in a very big way and it is coming in a very big way, but it is not getting that popular because of the constraints. The constraint is space. Even now in your uh, your Tesla or other battery backups, they are coming. But the whole idea problem is that. Okay, First of all, in industry, in Indian industry is a mass industry. Now, masses has to be produced. Now, those masses have, have to run their factory. And if they are not finding anything which is, um, you know, uh, 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 adding value to their product or adding uh, being at price level proper, then they are not. Now, Tesla is coming, but the cost wise, it is very, very high. At the same time, it is, uh, it, it, it's a battery backup. So again, it has a constraint that it cannot go for a longer period. Now, suppose if you have a bungalow and if you want a UPS system there for four, five, six hours, that UPS or a battery backup system, any battery backup system is going to be sufficient. But in case if you say I have a bungalow, but then it's a 12 hours uh, power cut we have there, then 100% you will go and you will have to go in for a generator in case you want that to be taken care of for the 12 hours. No battery will give you that kind of a uh, functioning for 12 hours. So that is the reason Tesla is a very bright uh, uh, thing which is coming. Of course, we are here, uh, we see new inventions and discoveries every now and then, but it has to be, uh, it is yet to take time to take over generators, I feel. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I completely agree with you. Thank you. In fact, um, um, I... And uh, you, you are, you guys are so lucky to have an admission in Somaya College. I was, I had during my engineering days, I had come to Somaya, and so I was not having uh, enough marks to get admission in Somaya. But I am happy and thankful to Rohan sir for inviting me today to give this lecture uh, to Somayaites and, uh, and get a feel of Somaya College there. Is there any other question? I'm, I'm so happy. All the, all the students are so bright that. Uh, they were able to follow everything. But still, if anything is there, please let me know. Any sir, question? Uh, sir, uh, apart from uh, the technical thing, I would like to ask you uh, one question. Uh, would you like to share your story, how you start, how you or your uh, maybe parents, or I don't know, uh, how your journey of uh, the entrepreneurial journey basically started? Would you like to share that? Uh, so that uh, I mean, uh, so that students may take some inspiration uh, to start something and helping society with creating a job. And in that, in that per se, you can uh, just guide a few few minutes on that. Yes, absolutely. I have. Uh, no, I'll, I'll I'll tell you in brief. In fact, um, I passed out my um, um, engineering, and then I joined my um, uncle, and with whom I was working for generators and uh, working there for about sixteen years. I started my own company, Prime Power System, and uh, from from 2006, uh, I am running my this uh, this company, Prime Power, from almost last 15 years. Yeah, so uh, this is a total journey. Of course, there are many ups and downs. Any business, any uh, journey uh, has ups and downs. You have uh, good orders. You have slack in the market. You have tough orders. You have good at the same time. Those good orders are sometimes tough. Like uh, I have installed uh, 
generators in BKC, all the BKC, uh, the uh, ILFS or ICI or uh, Capital, they are all installed there with Caterpillar generators. So we have supplied there and uh, you have tough journey. But then, yes, uh, if you are having a right coach, if you have the right guidance, so your foundation, your basics are very strong. And if your basics and foundation is strong, uh, no matter uh, whatever uh, hurdles or obstacles you face during your journey, you are bound to succeed because uh, uh, when you are in the water, you have no option but to swim. And that is how uh, the journey uh, of career starts, that you have no option but to succeed because nobody wants to, nobody, you know, Oh, wants to tell that I have not succeeded. Everybody wants to tell their success story. So I'm sure all the students here are so lucky to have a batch of Somaya College and uh, good professors like uh, Rohan sir and Barnali madam. So if the foundation is strong, I'm sure they're going to have a very nice journey uh, without any fear if they go out uh, with the in intention, with the uh, uh, thought that yes, there are going to be obstacles, there are going to be hurdles, maybe there are going to be occasions where you, in spite of standing first in the class or first in the college or maybe one of the bright students in the class or college, you still will feel here, oh, I am nowhere. But then that is the journey. When you go through that tunnel, of course, when you come out, you feel the light has a different color altogether. So I, I can only tell you this case. Yes, uh, each one of us and each one of you here will have a wonderful journey. And maybe after 20 years, you will uh, be make, marking your uh, uh, presence in the society somewhere or the other. We hope for that. Yes, sir. Perfect, perfect. Great, sir. Great. Uh, thank you for your valuable guidance. And uh, I hope if someone has any questions right now or feedback, uh, someone wants to give some feedback what they have learned today from uh, you just have finished their exam. So, how was your experience about the today's session in a one or two lines? Uh, any student can just unmute and uh, speak about the today's session feedback. And then we will have a vote of thanks and then the session will be concluded. Meanwhile, I want to uh, uh, ask you all students, uh, have you submitted your attendance? So if not, you can just get a link in the chat box. Second point, uh, as sir has mentioned about his uh, entrepreneurial journey, that he first acquired the school knowledge, then almost for 15 years, he get the experience uh, and right guidance experiences in terms of what goes good, what goes wrong, how we can uh, do something good and how we should not do something bad or it can uh, give us some what is it, losses or something. So that is what we are going to learn by uh, his experience and it's our uh, great fortune that he is with us today despite of his uh, busy schedule and so I really thank you sir. But before that I want uh, my students to give some uh, feedback about today's session. So any any two three students can just unmute themselves and go ahead. Yeah, just unmute and go ahead. Hello, sir. I'm audible. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. First of all, sir, I would like to thank you so much for an amazing course. I mean, really worth my time and it's so much to learn about even your uh, entrepreneur uh, like uh, journey. It's really inspiring. So I would really like to thank you for this amazing course and really, really, really worth my time. Thank you so much again. Thank you. That was so sweet of you. God bless you. Sir, if we do not have any questions, then uh, we can uh, close. Yes, yes. Uh, we have our uh, head of the department uh, here. Uh, she would like to give some uh, vote of thanks and inspirational uh, points so that we can uh, conclude the session. please. Yeah, actually, I would like to thank you, sir, uh, for sparing so much of your time, precious time, I would say. You thank will you. be uh, busy with all your schedules and taking out time for the students. Actually, uh, uh, we would, I would have loved, loved to have met you in person, but, uh, because of this situation, it's, it has become so difficult. And, uh, this is a new platform for all of us, for us and for the students. And it's an experimentation, uh, in a sort 
because interactive sessions are always good uh, that's what is mm. my thought uh, but okay uh, we are coping with the online platforms too and i thank you so much sir for everything uh, that you have said and it was an insight for even me uh, because some of the points that you have told about the generation generator installations and all uh, even i was not aware of because there are things that has changed the technology is changing so uh, fast so dynamically that uh, the books that they have they stick to something which are very old and uh, conventional so something some new technologies that has come up uh, it's nice to know about and uh, the technologies i'm sure the students must have benefited a lot from it and uh, they will surely ponder upon what you have said and uh, they will think about it for sure thank you again so much sir. and mm-hmm. once the pandemic is over i invite you to come to our campus and it's a beautiful campus you must have seen uh, at times or maybe i don't know if you have seen it or not seen it yes i have seen it okay sir so uh, then it's a known campus to you please yeah. come once the pandemic is over sir. surely surely madam it will be my pleasure to uh, come there once again and uh, meet all of you there yes, and uh, thank you very much for uh, the appreciation and the words you have uh, showered upon me no sir it was uh, it actually was a very beautiful session i loved it and uh, i am sure the students must have loved it any any questions still in case the students have and they come up uh, to the professors uh, to you or the rohan sir yes, they can actually post those question to rohan sir uh, this for the students i'm telling that you can if you have any questions you can post those questions to rohan sir maybe yeah. now you don't have any questions whenever you are thinking about it probably you will have some questions yeah. so you can post them to rohan sir rohan sir can get those answers from sir yeah yeah yes uh it's a very nice uh, nicely done session today thank you for your time sir and students also we are concluding the session with one video which will all remind our uh, very now campus so we'll just watch this video and then we will uh, conclude the meeting so everyone just type uh, fantastic in the chat box everyone just to go ahead fantastic sir fantastic in fact i could you could take me to my college days and uh, i was missing the um, uh, canteen campus and uh, of course the uh, playground you know it was such a wonderful thing thank you sir for sharing and showing me that